Now, Jack and I are very active grassroots people. When you're out there doing stuff, you know, in the name of politics, you run into certain people that you learn to respect. And one of those people is an organizer here at the East Metro. I don't know very more people that are more dedicated to the cause of liberty than our next speaker. She, she took it amongst herself to run in Woodbury for, city, or for a, a school board. It wasn't easy. And she put in a good effort. And she got defeated. And some people that says, okay, you know what, I'm done. I quit. She came up here, was that the Thursday after that election, and gave one of the most powerful speeches. And ever since then, she has gone from 60 miles an hour to 100 miles an hour. She is on the campaign trail for something that's very important, and she's going to speak about that tonight. Without further ado, our very own Susan Danger, Danger, Danger Richardson. First of all, I would like to say hello to my stalker. Is he here? Because this is what I'm hearing from him. You say that I'm a Christian, that I speak at tea parties, that I rub elbows with Republicans. What about that disqualifies me from speaking about the bullying bill to make sure that children are protected? You think you know everything about me? Here is something that you don't know. My daughter was so brutally bullied when she was in kindergarten that my husband and I were forced to sell our home after three years. I know what bullying is, and I would have done anything to get it to stop. Here's the other thing you don't know about me. I'm from Montana, I carry bear spray, and I'm willing to use it. <laughs> All right, are you guys ready to heat things up? All right, here we go. We're going to talk about the bullying bill tonight, but we're going to start calling it our own name. We're gonna start calling it the anti-parent bill. So here we go. Local control of our school districts is now a thing of the past. A few weeks ago, the Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights conducted a discussion group with students to monitor the Anoka Hennepin County School District's implementation of a consent decree the district was forced to sign after settling a lawsuit with six students. Parents of students who were selected for the discussion groups were provided an opt-out form, and they had to opt their child out. Their child was automatically, if they were selected, and the parents did not see that note, they were automatically interviewed by goose-stepping feds who came into the school district. Tonight, we are going to, this is a little speech I call Connect the Dots. So tonight, we are going to connect the dots between this form, the bullying legislation, and a hate shooting that occurred at the Family Research Council headquarters in Washington, D.C. Are you guys interested? Yeah. All right, here we go. The key players in this story include government officials and the radical left. Let's name them off and see if you can tell the difference. The Department of Justice, the Department of Education, Health and Human Services, GLSEN, also known as the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Network, the Southern Poverty Law Center, Outfront Minnesota, the National Center for Lesbian Rights, the brave group of heroes standing for our children while trying to expose the suspicious and dangerous connections between the Obama administration and the radical leftist special interest groups are Judicial Watch, the Family Research Council, the Minnesota Child Protection League, and our newly created organization known as the Hiawatha Education Foundation, and I hope you, because this list on the right needs to grow every single day. Here we go with our story. 
you'll notice that the state of Minnesota has a target on it because we are involved in a war. You may not know it, but by the end of this speech, you will. We are involved in a war, and Minnesota is the battleground. Plans to target Minnesota and the Anoka Hennepin County School District appear to date back before July of 2011. The driving force behind federal and state bullying legislation is GLSEN. Remember that stands for the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network, started by the safe, and so, the safe school czars, czar, uh, Kevin Jennings, appointed by Obama, who is also part of NAMBLA, the Na North American Man-Boy Love Association. Doesn't that sound great? To have a pedophile in charge of safe schools in the Obama administration? GLSEN was used which used the National Climate Survey to imply that students are performing poorly or are harassed because they are gay or LGBT. Because the GLSEN Climate Survey allowed students to self-select self and failed to use proper statistical sampling methods, results of the study were biased and unreliable. Legislation at the federal and state level were crafted to protect specific classes of students based on this GLSEN study, which is completely bogus. The special interest group you are seeing on the screen are protected by the Obama administration with the help of the Department of Education, the Department of Justice, and Health and Human Services. The Family Research Council is a leading conservative advocacy group that seeks to advance faith, family, and freedom in public policy and the culture from a Christian worldview. The Family Research Council wanted to know to what extent the Department of Justice and the Department of Education cooperated with the Southern Poverty Law Center and the National Center for Lesbian Rights in their lawsuit against the Anoka Hennepin School District. Failure of the Department of Justice and the Department of Education to comply with a data request resulted in the involvement of Judicial Watch. Let's take a closer look at what led to the Anoka Hennepin County School District to sign a 61-page decree that resulted in the bullying legislation, which is also known as, as we call it here at the Tea Party, the Anti-Parent Bill. Here we go. In July of 2011, the Southern Poverty Law Center and the National Center for Lesbian Rights sued the Anoka Hennepin County School District to overturn the district's policy requiring teachers to remain neutral on the subject of homosexuality. As of today, this has become such a serious issue in that school district, they have their first transgender kindergartner. That's how bad things are getting over there. This was done after the Department of Justice coordinated with the Southern Poverty Law Center and the National Center for Lesbian Rights in what it termed as an extensive investigation into sex-based harassment, which compelled the school district to sign a 61-page consent agreement on March 5th of 2012. To determine the extent of collaboration, Judicial Watch issued a Freedom of Information Act requesting <coughs> information on any communications between the Department of Justice, the Department of Education, the Southern Poverty Law Center, and the National Center for Lesbian Rights after they refused to cooperate with the Family Research Center. The Department of Justice located 7,000 452 pages, but withheld 96% of the documents. They have yet to comply with the request. In July of 2012, a group of Department of Justice employees led by their fearless hero, Holder, joined with the Southern Poverty Law Center to honor the Anoka Hennepin County School District students involved in the lawsuit to force the district to endorse homosexual conduct. 
Five of the students received an award at the Department of Justice annual LGBT Pride Month program in the Great Hall of the Main Justice Building. This prompted a shooting at the Family Research Council headquarters. You see the Southern Poverty Law Center? They have a website that maintains a list of targets, which included the Family Research Council. There was enough court documentation to specifically imply that, the Southern, that this shooter was after the researcher at the Family Research Council who was involved in the Anoka Hennepin County lawsuit, who was checking into it, making sure that everything was legal. This organization, SPLC, was uh, connected to the shooting in court. Let's take a look at their hate map. Let's take a look at the Minnesota hate map. You guys think you're on it? Jake, are you on it yet? I don't think so, not yet, not yet. Please note that 12 targets listed on the SPLC hate map for Minnesota. Who or what organization is next? The one, um, the one group that I will have to note here is the Parents Action League. Can you imagine a group of parents being targeted by the SPLC as a hate organization? A group of parents. Let's take a look at the proposed bullying bill and why it puts students at risk. Now, I want you to understand that this bullying bill puts forth a nebulous uh, definition of bullying. It can be a perception. So let's say your child is perceived to be a bully. A person with a cell phone who has an app downloaded on the cell phone decides to issue an anonymous report against your child. That goes in to a national database. That national database is connected to Health and Human Services and Homeland Security. You as a parent don't even have to know. They don't have to inform you at all because there is no required parental notification. So you can imagine your child grows up, they're 25, 26 years old. Maybe they decide to apply for a job. Maybe they decide to uh, go to college or apply for um, a permit to purchase a firearm. They do not know that they have been branded as a bully and they're going to be ban branded as a bully for the rest of their life. Now let's take a look at what this bill does to our schools. This bill forces mandated quotas on our schools. In other words, let's take East Ridge High School. East Ridge High School with over a thousand students has a mandated quota of, let's just say, 100 to 200 mandated reports um, under this law per year. Let's say that they've tracked um, a certain number of reports to hot spots. Let's say that hot spot is, I don't know, in a social studies classroom and maybe I'm the social studies teacher. And as a social studies teacher in that classroom that has a hot spot, I have a certain number of mandated reports that I'm going to have to issue every single year. If I do not, my teacher license is at risk. If you violate those mandated quotas, you could lose your school funding. Also, private school accreditation is tied to this. You are not free and clear just because your child is in a private school. Now, what have we've done with the Hiawatha Education Foundation is, is we want to be all about action and we want to give you all of the things that you need to arm yourself for this war. So this is what we've got. We have got a sign-up sheet. You sign up, give us your name, give us your email, we might have less than 24 hours notice to get to a hearing. This thing gets out of the Senate Finance Committee, it might go through. We don't want to see that happen. We have letters that you can send to your senator. I have sample letters. I also have sample letters to the editor. We want you to galvanize others. Talk to your church and your neighbors. I have talking points for you. 
I would also like for you to visit the SOB. Now, you might wonder what that stands for. Dayton's office? <laughs> Dayton's office? Oh, pretty close. It's the, uh, it's the Senate office building. I or the state office building, I'm sorry, the state office building. I have a list of all of the senators on the finance committee with their phone number, their address, and their email address. Are you guys ready to fight? Yeah. yeah.